Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is a very sleepy Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. This is the first of a series of videos that I'll be doing about logical fallacies and in this video you'll be getting two for one because I'll be discussing both the base rate fallacy as well as Simpson's paradox. And the reason I'm discussing them both in the same video is that often people make false claims that comprise both fallacies. The argument goes something like this. More vaccinated people are being hospitalised or dying than unvaccinated people. So that means vaccines don't work. Or some even claim that this shows vaccines cause harm. So why are these people wrong? Well, firstly, the people making the claims are failing to take into consideration the total number of people in each group. This is known as the base rate fallacy. Let's say this orange liquid here represents hospitalised vaccinated people and the green liquid here represents hospitalised unvaccinated people. Now, at first glance, it looks like indeed there are more hospitalised vaccinated people than unvaccinated people. However, when we take into account how many people are in each group, we see that the proportion of vaccinated people being hospitalised is considerably lower than the proportion of hospitalised unvaccinated people. And the same argument goes for the proportion of people dying. Or if you prefer to look at this in graphical form, we can see here that it appears there are more vaccinated people being hospitalised than unvaccinated people. But if we look at all the data, we can clearly see that there are many more vaccinated people than there are unvaccinated people. So when we look at it as a proportion, a much lower proportion of vaccinated people are being hospitalised than unvaccinated people. So that's the first fallacy, but you'll notice that the liquid in the two centrifuge tubes actually looks quite different. That brings me to the second fallacy, Simpson's paradox. The term Simpson's Paradox was first coined in 1972 in this paper here, but the phenomenon had been described in the literature going back to 1899, and the now famous Simpson first described it in 1951. It's a phenomenon that is often encountered in social science and medical science, and refers to effects being hidden when data from different subgroups is combined. This graph here shows it visually. It looks like there is a positive correlation between the data, but in fact, the data is made up of two distinct subgroups. When we look at these subgroups, we see that there is actually a negative correlation for both. So what's that got to do with the number of people being hospitalised or dying from COVID? As most people know, your risk of being hospitalised or dying from COVID increases with age. And it just so happens that a higher proportion of older people are vaccinated than younger people. These are the figures here for the USA, but we see the same thing in most countries. So basically, the age groups of people who are most likely to be hospitalised or die from COVID are the age groups most likely to be vaccinated. So how do we analyse the data to make sure we are not succumbing to the base rate fallacy or Simpson's paradox? Firstly, instead of looking at absolute numbers, we should look at rates. For example, if we are looking at deaths, we could look at deaths per 100,000 people. And to account for the different age makeup of populations, we can use age standardised rates. This has been done in this graph here. It shows the age standardised weekly death rate per 100,000 people from COVID in the USA. 
And no, this is the death rate from COVID as a proportion of the whole population, not the death rate of people who catch COVID, which is, of course, much higher. As you can see, unvaccinated people are much more likely to die than vaccinated people. And the people most protected against dying are those who have had two boosters. So if you see people succumbing to either the base rate fallacy or Simpsons paradox in comments on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook or anywhere else, please share this video with them. Thank you for listening. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button so that YouTube will share it with more people. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I will be making more videos in the future looking at logical fallacies. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.